Welcome to Lab 3. The major objective of Lab 3 is to learn about acceleration by actually measuring the acceleration of a moving object. Now, we will use the same setup we used in Lab 2. That is the ticker timer. Now, look at the activity. Now, I hope everybody has the printed lab with you. We're going to now look at the first activity. Now, in this activity, I have a... I have a trolley attached to a tape, and the tape passes through the ticker timer, and the tape... I have about three meters of tape that is uh, on this side. I will allow the car to be pulled by. <laughs> now, look, <clears throat> I'm going to show you the whole of the track. I'm going to pull the trolley by means of a mass. I'm going to suspend. Now, if you watch here, this is the mass I'm going to suspend, and there is a piece of string. Now, when I allow this mass to fall, you can see it pulls the trolley with it. And you notice that I have balanced this very precariously on, on the CD cases. And if it falls down, you can have a good laugh at me. All right, let me reset it back in its original place. Well, we are now ready to run the tape. I turn on the ticket timer so that it produces 40 dots a second and I let it go. Well, you see what happened. Now, here is the tape I just produced. This is the beginning here and look at the dots. I want you to write down one observation you make by looking at these dots. Look at this. Each dot is a little farther away than the previous one. Is that right? In other words, the intervals are getting more and more and more. All right, I'm going to show you the entire tape. Well, as much as I can show you. It's over three meters. So, it's going to be a little difficult to show you. But you can see, as we go to the right, the dots are getting farther and farther and farther. What does that mean? It means, in the same interval, the tape is moving greater and greater distances. And that is the sign of acceleration. In the same time interval, look at this, the same time interval, the distance moved keep on increasing. Right? I want the tape to settle down. All right. So, in the same time interval, the distance is increasing. That shows the tape has been accelerating. Now, how do we calculate the acceleration? All right. Now, I have asked you to cut eight pieces out of this, each containing 10 intervals. And of course I need to cut off the first few. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut the first few. And starting from here, I'm going to count 10 dots and cut my first strip and name it number one. All right, I'm going to do that and I'm going to put this on the board and show it to you so that you can make your measurements. All right, now let me first cut the first one and let's make the conversion factor. You know that in order that you may get the exact length of the strip, we need a conversion factor. All right, let's work that out. So I'm going to cut the first strip. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten intervals. Now, you must understand this. I am not taking 
10 dots. I'm taking 10 intervals. Now tell me, what is the time taken for one interval? You remember in the last class we talked about it? It is 0 0.025 seconds. Therefore, the time taken for the trolley to travel this distance is 0.25 seconds. And what is this distance? Let's measure it. I'm going to use uh, my meter ruler to measure it. The length of this trip is, you don't believe me, it's exactly 9 centimeters. So, the length of the first trip is 9 centimeters. Let me write that down. The length of the first trip. The length of strip 1 is 9 centimeters. Now, you measure the length of strip 1. When I show it to you on the board, measure the length of strip 1 on your screen. Divide 9 centimeter by what you get. And that is your conversion factor. That means every measured length will then be multiplied by that conversion factor so that you get the exact length of the strip. All right? Okay, let me do that and I will get back to you in a minute. You see, with all the expertise I have in this experiment, I managed to produce only six strips. Strip 1, strip 2, strip 3, strip 4, strip 5 and strip 6. Originally, I expected that you will get eight. So you will notice that I have actually modified the worksheet. So you will be working with six strips. Now tell me, if I divide the length of strip one with the time interval 0.25, in other words, that will be L1 over 0.25, what will that value represent? L1 divided by 0.25 is the average velocity during that interval. And you can actually approximate it. Suppose I take a point at the center of this trip. I can say that value L1 divided by 0.25 is the instantaneous velocity at that point. All right, I'm going to call it V1, the instantaneous velocity, let's call it V1, the instantaneous velocity at the center of, I don't think you can see that because the, so that will be equal to V1. And that is the instantaneous velocity at this point. Similarly, if you divide the length of strip 2, by 0.25 you get the instantaneous velocity at this point all right so i have a l2 divided by 0.25 will be equal to v2 the instantaneous velocity at this point and similarly, I can now find the instantaneous velocity at this point. That will be length L3 divided by 0.25 and we call that V3. So I want you to measure the length of each strip, multiply with the conversion factor, and then divide the length of each strip with 0.25 and obtain the instantaneous velocity at each of those points. So that you get uh, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6 and so on. Alright, let me then ask you. Now, you know the velocity, instantaneous velocity here is V1 and the instantaneous velocity at the center of the second strip is V2. 
Now, what is the time taken for the velocity to change from V1 to V2? Anybody tell me? What is the time taken for the velocity to change from V1 to V2? Well, it is the time taken for the strip to travel from the center of strip 1 to the center of strip 2. And isn't it reasonable to assume that it is 0.25? So now tell me, if I obtain V2 minus V1, what does V2 minus V1 represent? V2 minus V1 represents the change in velocity from this position to this position. And if I divide that by 0.25, I will get a measure of the acceleration of the object, of the trolley. Is that right? V2 minus V1, V2 minus V1 divided by 0.25 is the measure of the acceleration. <coughs> Similarly, if I have V3, the, the instantaneous velocity, here, minus V2, V3 minus V2, divided by 0.25, will also be the acceleration. So, although I haven't asked you this in the worksheet, I want you to do this now. Find V2 minus V1 divided by 0.25, then V3 minus V2 divided by 0.25. Let me write this over here so that you can do this. Find these quantities. V2 minus V1 divided by 0.25. That is the first thing. Second, V3 minus V2 divided by 0.25. Then find V4 minus V3 divided by 0.25. Then find V5 minus V4 divided by 0.25 and V6 minus V5 divided by 0.25 and see whether you get the same value. All right, what have I asked you to do in the worksheet? Let's have a look at the worksheet. Well, if you now look at page 3, what have I asked you to do in page 3? <clears throat> I have asked you to find the instantaneous velocity at the center of each, each strip. In other words, the length of strip 1 divided by 0.25 is the instantaneous velocity there. <clears throat> the length of strip 2 divided by 0.25 is the instantaneous velocity in the second case, and so on, find the instantaneous velocity at the center of each strip by dividing the length of the strip by 0.25. Those are the values there. And these times, what are those times? As the time increases, at the end of 0.25, you have the instantaneous velocity, at the end of 0.5 seconds, the instantaneous velocity is the, is the velocity of the second strip. So as time increases, you see how the instantaneous velocity changes. So here we have a relation between the velocity of the trolley and time. And uh, I have asked you to do, to, to do a graph. Use Excel to draw a graph of instantaneous velocity against time. That means the instantaneous velocity on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis and measure its slope. And I have told you, I have shown you how to draw a graph like this and measure the slope. All right? So obtain the graph, copy and paste it there. And now, if you look at page 4, what you see in page 4 is what I have done here. You see? This is strip 1, strip 2, strip 3, strip 4, strip 5, strip 6. In the diagram here, I have 
gone up to 10 strips, but unfortunately I couldn't get up to 10 strips. Now, did you see that your graph, velocity against time, is a line like this? Did you actually see that? Well, if you draw the graph of velocity against time, that will be, that's how the graph is going to look like. As time increases, the velocity also increases. Now, if this is the velocity time graph, that is my rod is the graph, then what, what does the area under the graph represent? You see, the area under the graph represents, in the last lesson we told you, if you draw a graph of velocity on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, the area under the graph will be a measure of the displacement of the object. Now, the displacement of the object during this time interval is the sum of the lengths of all the strips. Is that right? So, the area under this graph is actually a measure of the displacement. I want you to measure that area and see if that will be exactly equal to the sum of the lengths of all the strips. All right. So, if you look at question here, what is the relation between the distance traveled by the trolley distance traveled by the trolley and the area under the velocity time graph. Okay, and now I have a question. Let's talk about that question. Well, the question goes like this. The velocity of an object at time t equal to zero is five meters per second. And its velocity at t equal to 10 seconds is 15 meters per second. What is the acceleration of the object? All right, I'm going to leave that for you to do. And also measure the area under the graph. Use a geometrical formula to measure the area under this graph. I showed to you in the last lab how to do that. This is a trapezoid. The area of that trapezoid is the sum of the parallel sides divided by 2, half the sum of the parallel side multiplied by the perpendicular distance. In other words, it will be V1 plus V2 divided by 2 multiplied by the time. That will give you this area. And what does the area represent? The area will represent the distance traveled by the object or the displacement of the object. I'm going to leave you to read the remaining part and let's go to the next activity. The next activity is to measure the acceleration of free fall. If I allow an object to fall freely, what will be its acceleration? Now, if you have listened to the lectures, you know that all freely falling objects fall with the same acceleration and what is the name for that acceleration? Acceleration due to gravity and we represent that by g, is that right? And what is the value of g that we normally use in our calculation? It will be 9.8 meter per second squared. That is the actual value of g. Well, let's measure it. If I allow this to fall, freely so I'm going to allow a ball like this to fall freely and measure its acceleration now how can we do that well if you watch here I have the ticket timer and I have the paper that goes underneath the carbon and I have the ball that I'm going to drop well what I'm going to do is I'm going to climb on a chair you see because it is going to fall very fast, we are not going to get many dots. You see, so that's going to limit the accuracy of our experiment. 
So, what I'm going to do is, uh, I probably, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to climb on this table and then drop the ball, okay? Well, I'm not going to show you, but you probably can see a part of what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to climb on this table. Okay, there I go, and I'm going to uh, turn on the timer. Okay, and I'm going to hold it to a considerable height. All right. I don't think it's going to be that easy for me. Now, you are sitting at home and watching. I'm your lab partner. You see, I want you to really actively participate in what I'm doing. Because this is something you ought to be doing, and I'm actually helping you to do that. So, I'm going to turn on the timer. Here you are. And I'm going to drop this. Okay, let's have a look at uh, the paper. Do we have anything there? You see, disappointments very often happen, but uh, I don't think we are disappointed. Well, can you see the dots on this paper? Well, I'm going to cut this and paste it onto the board, all right? Okay, now if you remember, this time I don't think we can cut 10, 10 dots. So I'm going to cut two intervals. Tell me, what is the time taken for the ball to travel that two dot interval? The the time taken for one interval is 1 40th of a second, 0 0.025 seconds. Therefore, the time taken for two intervals will be 0 0.05 seconds. So, I'm going to cut strips of length that contains two intervals. And I'm going to paste it on the board for you to take your measurements. All right. Well, here we are. I managed to get six strips out of our experiment. And uh, I have made a significant change. I told you I'm going to cut strips of length containing two intervals. I changed my mind when I produced the strip. I, I got four intervals in each strip. Four intervals. Now, I have made that change on your worksheet, so it's already been done. But tell me, what is the time interval for four of these intervals? One interval corresponds to one fortieth of a second, is that right? Therefore, four intervals will correspond to one tenth of a second, point one second. So, the length of each of these strips corresponds to the distance that this mass fell in 0.1 second. This is the first 0.1 second, this is the second 0.1 second, the third 0.1 second, and so on. All right, now measure the strips of each of these on your screen and multiply it with the conversion factor. Now, how do we get the conversion factor? I'm going to give you the actual length of the first trip. The actual length of the first trip is 8.4 centimeter. All right? Actual length of the first trip is 8.4 centimeter. Now, obtain your conversion factor and measure the length of each of these strips and multiply it by the conversion factor. And now, go over to your tables and enter the length of each of these and calculate the instantaneous velocity. Now, calculate the instantaneous velocity for the first trip by dividing L1 by 0.1, divide L2 by 
L3 divided by 0.1 and so on. That will give you the instantaneous velocities in intervals of 0.1 second. And then plot a graph of the instantaneous velocity on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis and measure its slope. And that slope should be a measure of acceleration due to gravity. All right, let's see what you get. Well, if you don't get the right answer, which is 9.8 meter per second squared, well, the blame goes to who? To me or to you? Well, the blame doesn't go to anybody because this experiment has several errors. Well, we are both partners in this experiment. Can you tell me what are some of the glaring errors in the experiment? Well, I want you to make a note of those things uh, at the end of your lab reports. What do you think are some of the glaring errors and what can you really do to improve this experiment? I told you that a physics student, when you do a lab, you must behave like a scientist and think like a scientist. So think of some of the improvements you can make in this experiment. All right, so obtain the value of G from your graph. Use Excel to draw your graph and copy and paste it on your report. Well, in place of this mass, if I drop this small mass, what do you think will happen? Will the acceleration be greater, smaller, or the same? Well, I'm going to do that experiment for you, and I'm going to give you the, the same intervals. Well, if I can get six of them, I will do that. All right, so let me produce the tape for this, and I will get back to you in a minute. Well, I'm ready to climb on the table one more time with my load, and this time I'm going to drop this ball. All right, so watch it one more time. I don't know how best you can watch it, but uh, I'm going to drop this in the same way as I did the previous one to make sure that I don't want to fall, to make sure that I have enough length of. Okay, I turn on the timer and. Yeah, oh. Okay, I don't know if it worked very well, but uh, let's see. Well, it gave me a pretty good tape. And I have a feeling that maybe this is more accurate than the previous one. Well, you be the judge. The actual length I measured of the first trip now is 18 0.4 centimeter. So use that actual length to work out your conversion factor and obtain the instantaneous velocity in each case and draw a graph of instantaneous velocity against time. And this time also I have cut four intervals which means the time interval is 0.1 seconds. So, instantaneous velocity when the time is 0.1 second. The instantaneous velocity when the time is 0.2 seconds, 0.3 seconds, 0.4 seconds, 0.5 seconds, and 0.6 seconds. Draw a graph and calculate the slope that is a value for g. Well, what I would like you to do is find an average value of g from your experiment and obtain a percent error and you know how to calculate the percent error okay and now there are some questions I want to just touch one of those questions just give you a hint on how to answer just one question well this is the graph given to you in that question tell me what is the acceleration of the object from time t equal to 0 to t equal to 3 that is the slope of this line. The slope of that line will be the change in, in the value of x. See, this is uh, 
Well, this is the value of V. This is a graph of V against T, velocity against time. So, measure the slope of that. This will be 7 meter per second divided by 3. So, the acceleration here will be 7 over 3 meter per second squared. And now, let me take you down to the next one. Use the area under the graph to find the displacement of the object. Find the area under the graph. Well, the area under this graph is a triangle. So the area will be one half base multiplied by height. And then write down a definite integral that will represent the area. Now, what definite integral will represent that area? It will be integral of 0 to 3. All right, integral of what? The velocity function that represents this graph. That means you need to find the equation of that line. What is the equation of that line? Well, I'm going to give it to you. I want you to figure it out. The equation here is V equal to AT because V0 is 0. That means V equal to 7 over 3T. That is the equation of that line. So integrate 7 over 3T with respect to T. So integral 0 to 3 of 7 over 3 dt is a measure of the displacement from t equal to 0 to t equal to 3 and compare the results. Do you get the same value for the area? All right. Now, let me show how that can be done for intervals from t equal to 12 to 17. Now, this is t equal to 12 this is t equal to 17. Now, how do you find the area under the graph here? Now, this velocity here is 7 meter per second. And this one is, isn't that 3 meter per second? Yes. So, this is a trapezoid. The area will be half the sum of the parallel sides multiplied by the perpendicular distance. So that would be 7 plus 3 over 2 multiplied by 5. That is the area here. And that area represents the displacement of the object from t equal to 12 to t equal to 17. Alright, how do you represent this as a definite integral? It will be integral from t equal to 12 to t equal to 17 of what function? What is the function? You need to obtain the equation of this line. How do you obtain the equation of the line? First of all, we obtain the slope. All right, tell me what is the slope. In order to obtain the slope, you need this distance. What is that distance? That is 7 minus 3. So this distance is 4 meter per second. Well, and that is negative, is that right? So I'm going to call that negative 4 meter per second because the velocity is decreasing. And the time interval is 17 minus 12. Delta T is 5 seconds. Therefore, the slope is delta y divided by delta x. That would be negative 4 over 5. What's the unit? Meter per second squared. In other words, that is the acceleration there. The acceleration of the object from t equal to 12 to t equal to 17 is negative 4 fifth meter per second squared. All right, you know the slope of this line. How do you find the equation of that line? Well, to find the equation, now you need one point on the line. We have two points. Let's take this point. What is that point? 
This point is x equal to 12, y equal to 7. So the point is 12, 7, and the slope is negative 4 fifth meter per second squared. Therefore, the equation of the line will be, look at that, y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. That is how you write the equation of a line knowing the slope and a point. So, our point y1 is 7, x1 is 12. You got y minus 7 equal to m times x minus 12. And notice that y here is v, the velocity, and x is the time t. So, I'm going to write here v minus 7 equal to slope is negative 4 fifth times t minus 12. All right, I'm not going to go any further. I'm going to leave it here for you. I want you to solve this equation for v and integrate that velocity function from t equal to 12 to t equal to 17 to obtain the area under that graph. In other words, the displacement during that time interval. All right, do that on your own. I think I want to show you just one more small problem. Well, briefly, on the two last questions. Look at the question on page 10. A car travels from point A to point B, a distance of 70 meters. We don't know the velocity of the car at point A, but when the car reaches point B, it has a velocity of 12 meter per second. And it takes 10 seconds for the car to travel from A to B. You are told to find the velocity at A. What is the velocity V1? Alright, what do you think is the best way to find the value of V1? We know the distance x equal to 70 meter. We know the final velocity at B, V2 equal to 12 meter per second. And it takes 10 seconds for this to happen. <coughs> well, if you know this, because the acceleration is a constant, the distance traveled or displacement will be the average velocity. What is the average velocity? V1 plus V2 divided by 2. So x equal to V1 plus V2 over 2 and multiply that with t. So in here you know x, you know V2, you know your time. Therefore, you can solve for V1. And once you know V1, you know V2, and time, you can calculate the acceleration. Okay, how about the next question? Well, you should be able to read a question and talk about it, right? And understand the different things that are given, and how from the given things go to the unknown. A ball is dropped from a height of 200 meters. That means the initial position of the ball is 200 meters. So this is the initial position and this is the ground level. So we say y0 equal to 200 meters, the initial position. We normally use the notation y0, is that right? So we know y0 equal to 200 meter. It is dropped. When you drop an object, its initial velocity is zero. So you know that v1 equal to zero or v initial equal to zero. What do you need to find? How long will it take the ball to fall the first 100 meter? In other words, 
How long will it take for it to fall the first 100 meter? Well, when it falls 100 meter, it will come to the position y equal to 100. Is that right? If the initial position is 200 meter, after falling through 100 meter, it comes to y equal to 100 meter. So, your, the question is, how long will the ball take to travel from y0 equal to 200 meter to y equal to 100 meter? Now, can you give me the equation for the position function when an object is dropped vertically? The position function is, I'm going to write that down here, y equal to y of t, in other words, y as a function of time, will be y0 plus v0t minus, well, gt squared, is that right? Or one half gt squared y0 equal to v0t minus one half gt squared. Now, y minus uh, g because g is negative, is that right? Now, what we have is, we, we have our y is going to be 100 and y0 is 200 and you know g and you can calculate your t using this equation 100 equal to 200 plus v0 is 0 minus 1 half gt squared and you can solve for t from that equation all right the next question says what is the time taken for the next 100 meter now tell me Will the time taken for the first 100 meter be the same as the time taken for the next 100 meter? No, because the, the ball will be falling much faster in the last 100 meter. Now, when it falls in the last 100 meter, it is going to come down to y equal to zero. So, what we do is we go to the first position function and put y equal to 0, 0 equal to y0 plus v0t minus 1 half gt squared. Now, if you now solve for t from here, that value of t will be the total time taken from y0 equal to 200 to y equal to 0. So this will be 0 equal to 200, this will be 0, minus 1 half gt squared. Solving this will give you the total time. And from the total time, you take away the time taken for the worst first 100, will give you the time taken for the next 100. All right. And I want you to do, do these graphs. I will give special attention to your understanding of this all right i'm not going to talk about this because i have discussed this in detail in the lecture classes all right okay you are now ready to complete the lab and draw all the graphs on excel copy and paste them and complete all the answers using full sentences and showing the full steps in doing problems like this, I would like to see all these steps. Okay? Don't just give me the answers. I want to see your complete steps. And complete this and upload it and submit before the deadline. I will see you for lab 4 later on.